Welcome to module 41. Today we shall take up three more interesting properties. First countability, second countability, and separability. Once again, we go back to metric spaces for motivation, especially the Euclidean space itself. So these properties just like uh, path connectivity, connectivity, compactness, Lindelof, etc., they can be classified as smallness properties, but not exactly. We have given a formal definition, and this first countability and second countability does not fall into that, though separability does. Now, why combining them? But they are quite going hand in hand. That's why I recommend. But nevertheless, there is some vague feeling that these conditions put some restriction on the on the size of the topology. You shall see why. Okay, and it is better to leave it like that instead of make, getting into formal definitions. So, what, what are we going to observe here? First, let me take any metric space. Okay. The base for a metric space topology is you take the balls of radius positive at all the points. Right? Suppose you are fixing one point and then looking at uh, all the neighborhoods of that point. Then, instead of taking all the balls of positive radius, you can simply restrict yourself to balls of radius 1 by n, balls of radius 1, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 4, and on, so on. To you know, wherever the discussion of neighborhoods is involved, only these balls will be sufficient. So this idea leads to the notion of first countability. With the usual topology on R, we know that the set of rational numbers is countable as well as dense subset. The same thing is true for all Euclidean spaces also. Only thing you have to do is you take all points such that all the coordinates are rational. That's also a countable set and it will be dense inside Rn. Okay. So this gives you another notion which is called separability okay before going to the third one let me state a theorem here for metric spaces and then that will induce the the second definition okay the third definition start with any metric space with a countable dense subset a just like Rn, but now I am generalizing it for any n, for any matrix space. All that I want is a countable dense subset, similar to Q or points with rational coordinates and so on. Okay. With this just with this much of hypothesis, I want to conclude the following thing. Then there exists a countable base for the topology X. Okay, D is a metric space, so D is a metric, and the topology X tau D has the property that it has a countable base. In particular, all Euclidean spaces have countable base. 
so what does it mean it means that every open subset is union arbitrary union but the members coming from a fixed countable set that is the that is the beauty so that already puts a lot of you know restricted condition on the topology it doesn't say remember it doesn't say that number of open sets is countable no because you are taking arbitrary union but now all the open subsets are unions of members from a one single family of countable sets so that is a countable base okay so that's quite strong condition so how to prove this one it's one line proof put b equal to collection of all balls of radius 1 by n not at all the points but only at the points of a where a is a countable dense set so a is inside little a is inside a n is inside a natural number okay this is a clearly a uh, countable collection because a is a countable set and n is also a countable set so <laughs> there are two different variables here but n cross n is a countable set this collection b is a base for a topology that is satisfies b1 and b2 this does not need any extra you know hypothesis i know this is this kind of things you have done so you must do that one okay that they have form a base it means what once you take finite intersection two intersection of two of them and a point there show that there is a smaller one contained inside that at the point and so on that kind of b1 and b2 you have to verify so this i will leave it as an exercise all these are open subsets in tau d right therefore b if you take the topology generated by b okay tau b that is contained inside tau d because tau d is a topology after all so what i want to show is that tau d is contained inside tau b so that this itself is a basis for tau b tau d okay and this is a countable base so that will end the proof so but this is one line proof again let u belong to tau d and x belonging to u what i have to do i must produce a member from this b such that x belongs to that member and that member is contained inside u so choose r positive first of all so set b r of x is contained inside u r we are used to this one because every member of tau d is union of such members where r is any positive number but once r is positive there is a n sufficiently large such that 1 by n is less than r by 2 okay now a is dense in x i am going to use so instead of arbitrary x i am going to shift it to a okay how a is dense in x it follows that take 1 by n radius around x this open ball every open ball will intersect a that is all because a is a dense dense subset so b n x b 1 by n x intersection a is non empty now take a point in this intersection then check that x itself belongs to b 1 by n x that is contained inside u this part is obvious because x is inside this one means distance between x and a is less than 1 by n so it is symmetric so this is here but why this is contained inside u because i have chosen 1 by n as than r by 2 triangle inequality over the gist of this is that we are going to take this as a definition of having such an a which is countable in dense this is going to be separability and we are going to do that 
B1 by N, huh? at each point, only countable thing. I am going to take the first countability. This gives you a big thing, namely, there is a countable base for the whole topology. <clears throat> there is a global base. So that gives you the third definition, which are interested, which you call second countability. <clears throat> okay. So we shall make a definition here. So we will we will now study these three notions in the reverse order. We say a topological space is second countable. Okay. Sometimes you just write double two here instead of second. Okay. If it has a countable base over. A topological space is said to be separable if there exists a countable dense subset. Over. Third one, we will wait for it. Let us make some. No, no, let us make some. The third one was the first one which we started with there. Okay. Let us make some observations here. Typical examples of second countable spaces are. Euclidean spaces. All that we have to do is consider the family of all balls with radius with uh, rational radius and centers at rational coordinates. When I say rational coordinates, all of them should be rational. Okay. So you can also see that. Finite product of second countable spaces is again second countable because if you take a countable base, okay, countable base here, members from here to cross that one, they will generate, they will give you base for the product. So countable cross countable is uh, countable again. So finite products are countable. Every subspace of a second countable space is second countable. If you can generate all the members of the bigger space, okay, when you take subspace, look at, say, Y is a subspace of A, look at Y intersection members of B, 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 where B is, so that will be a subspace for Y. Okay, so once again, this property is very important in analysis because it allows several countable processes, such as taking countable sums and integrations, etc. Because every open subset now will be union of from a countable family, right? So you can take u one. U1 union U2, U1 union U2 union U3. So any open sub, any uh, union can be written as increasing union. So all these things are possible. Okay. So we shall first prove two easy consequences of this definition, namely second countability. Every second countable space is separable. That is why I took the other way around here. Okay, first I said second countable. The separability automatically comes here. So how? Start with a countable base for X. Okay. Let S be a subset of X which contains exactly one point from every member B of this curly B. One single point B inside B. For each B inside curly B. B is the curly B is the countable base for X. Okay. Since I have chosen one point from each of them, this S will be again countable. This S is a subset of X, by the way. Okay. This is a countable set. Okay. Claim is it is dense. S bar is the whole of X. What is the meaning of that? Given any point X belonging to X, 
and an open set U such that X belongs to U. There exists a B belong to B such that X contained inside B contained inside U. Okay. But that means U intersection S is not empty. Okay. So that that B will have a point inside S. Right. So B intersection S is itself is non-empty. So U intersection S is also non-empty. So what we have shown here is that it intersects every non-empty open subset, and that is the density. Every second countable space is another thing. It is Lindelof. Remember what is Lindelof? Every open cover has a countable subcover. This also is very easy. Why? How? Take an open cover. I must produce a countable subcover, right? Yes or no? So how do I do that? So U is some open cover for X. But let us say B is a countable base for X because X is second countable. Okay, consider all members of B which are contained in some member of UI. Okay, so that is a subfamily of B. Some of them may be too large. One more, it must be some, some member of UI, that's all. So only take those things, call it B prime. Clearly, B prime is countable because it's a subfamily of B. Okay. We claim that B prime itself is a cover for X. Automatically, this is sub cover because we have taken only some, some families from these members UIs. Each of them is uh, each of them is contained in some member of UI. So that will be automatically contained inside that. Okay. So all that I have to show is we claim that B prime is a cover for X. So let X belong to X be any. Take X belonging to UI for some I. Because UIs are cover for X. Since B is a base, there will be some BN such that X belongs to BN and BN is contained inside UI. This BN is inside B prime by definition because I have taken those which are contained inside UI here. Therefore, X is contained inside only those B's which are inside B prime. Okay. Now, for each member B of B prime, choose one member UI which contains B. Okay. That forms a subfamily of UI which is clearly countable because I have chosen one for each BN. And they are bigger subsets than original B, so they will cover X. Now I come to the first countability. Look at a topological space X. So I want to define another concept here, which I have not done so far, namely by a neighborhood system or a local base. There are two names for the same concept. Okay, some people are local base, some people are neighborhood system. For at, at, at a point x belonging to x, we mean a collection of open subsets ui of x such that x is inside ui for every i. Okay, so they are all neighborhoods. Secondly, given any neighborhood, namely some open subset, such that X inside you, there exists a UI such that UI is contained inside. So this part is similar to base. Okay, but everything is happening at a single point X. That's why it's called local base. That is all. Okay. Away from X, this X is fixed. Away from X, this collection may not have that property. For only for neighborhoods of X, X belong to you, you will have a UI which is contained inside. So it's called a local base. 
okay clearly collection of all neighborhoods of a point forms a neighborhood system you are very generous in taking all of them here then then is no problem but this system may be unnecessarily huge and so we are looking at cases when there are neighborhood systems which may be countable and that is the, the third definition for today we say a space x is first countable at x belonging to x if it has a countable local base at x if this happens at every point then we will say x is first countable now we said second countability implies separability we have seen second countability implies first countability also because if we have a global base which is countable a global base is always a local base also right therefore second countability implies first countability so second count out of these three second countability is the strongest okay so once again a typical example of a first countable space is any metric space no no need to take euclidean spaces of course euclidean spaces are first countable okay that was our motivation all that we have to do is take balls of radius 1 by n at each point point is fixed take all the balls of radius 1 by n that will be a first that will be a countable base countable local base every second countable space is first countable that i observed already the converse need not be true if that was the case then we won't have two different definitions here okay easy counter example is obtained by taking a discrete topology on an uncountable set okay an uncountable discrete topology cannot have a countable base think about that whereas a discrete topology each singleton is an open set so i can just take that open set namely singleton as a local base that's all one single set will give you a base local base okay the importance of this local base okay is more or less due to the following fact it allows us retain the notion of sequential continuity intact intact means what sequential continuity was true inside metric spaces now first countable it is coming from the metric space that is what we have seen the notion of that one so only that is the key there not the rest of the metric space st structure first countability is playing the role of this importance of sequential continuity let us see let x be a first countable topological space then any function f from x to y is continuous at x belonging to x if and only if xn inside a converges to x should imply fxn converges to fx okay proof is exactly same one way is always possible you don't need first countability okay xn converges to x f is continuous fxn converges to fx this is always true in any topological uh, spaces the converse suppose for every sequence xn converging to x fxn converges to fx then how to show that f is continuous the proof is exactly same as in the case of metric spaces okay so let us go through that 
I am trying to put con converse here. Converse assume that F is sequentially continuous at X and not continuous at X. Then you will get a contradiction. Okay. Not continuous at X means what? There exists an open set U in Y such that Fx belongs to U, but no open set V in X such that X belongs to V and F of V is contained inside U. Now I apply this part, no open set, blah, 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 to each of these base, basic elements here, B and local base. Okay. For each n, give, take an x1 inside b1 such that f of x1 is outside u. After that, you take b1 intersection b2, that is an open subset containing x. So take x2 inside b1 intersection b2. It may be x1, don't, don't worry. Okay, take xn intersection, xn in the intersection of b1, b2, bn inductively such that f of xn is outside u. Okay. Automatically, this implies xn converges to x. Okay. But fxn doesn't look is very poor. It is far away outside u. So if fxn is, cannot convert to fx. So this contradiction proves the claim. So, I have a few exercises here and a comment show that every subspace of a first countable space is first countable, second countable space is second countable. This I have already explained, same explanation is there for one also. As an exercise, you write down the details. In particular, Deduce that a discrete subset of a second countable space okay, has to be countable. This is used in complex analysis. I don't know whether you have done this kind of things. The set of zeros of an analytic function, analytic function is defined on a domain of C, right? On open and connected subset of C. It may be the whole of C it will be automatically countable. So how do we prove that? By proving that it is discrete, automatically it will be countable. Show that if F is a family of closed intervals of positive length, which cover the whole of X, there is a countable subfamily of X which covers R. X, X is R here. If it is open intervals which cover R, countable family will cover because it is Lindelof. Okay. We have proved that R is second countable and second countability implies Lindelof. Right? So open intervals covering the whole of R will have a countable subfamily covering R. But I want it closed intervals closed intervals, you don't take single points. No single points are allowed. Okay, Intervals will be of positive length, that's all. A, B, closed interval, A less than B. Take such thing. Then you will get a countable subfamily which covers it all. So this you have to do is you know, only R, this is some tricky thing. On an uncountable set X, let tau be the cofinite topology. Okay, this is our favorite example. Is x tau with cofinite topology here? Yeah? First countable? Is it second countable? Is it separable? Check them. Because you check these things, you will understand these, these concepts properly. Okay. So that's all for today. Thank you.